our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This will be our, our last week with uh, this piece of Matthew 7 scripture that we've been looking at. Uh, I want to read it one more time for you. I want you to, uh, I want you to think about how it applies to you individually this morning. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So we've been looking at this parable now for, this is the third week, and it, it's, it sounds so simple, you know, uh, Jesus just told us that uh, the wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand and the rains came and the floods came and the wind, everything came that beat upon those houses. And yet, there was a difference. The house that was built upon the rock stood firm. The house that was built upon the sand, how's the song say, went Splat, went splat. So today we're going to talk about that foundation, that rock upon which we build our lives. And we're going to talk about what it takes to make sure that our foundation is strong. The only difference between these two guys in our parable is where they built their house. I mean, it, there wasn't any difference between the houses to speak of. There wasn't any difference between the storm. One of them wasn't just a spring shower and the other one a tornado or something. It was just an average rainstorm. And yet, the outcome for these guys was totally different, opposite as they could be. Why? Why do you suppose? Verse 24 kind of wraps it up for us. It says, Whosoever hears these things of mine and does them, he's like a wise man which built his house upon a rock. That key word there is does. The New International Version says, puts into practice these words of mine. The New Living Translation simply says, Anyone who listens to my teachings and obeys me is wise. So that's what it comes down to, obedience. You know, for many people, obedience is kind of an intimidating word because a life of consistent obedience is, seems to be just beyond our reach a little bit. We're more convinced of our ability to fail than we are of our ability to succeed sometimes. But we need to understand that the lack of constant obedience more than anything else, is what causes our lives to become unstable. And you know, we often try to blame the storm that we're going through, but it's not the storm. Everybody goes through storms. The problem isn't the bad weather that we face. It's the foundation that our life is built on that makes it different. When it comes to building a stable life, it really is important what's under your feet. And you have to ask, is it solid rock or is it sh shifting sand? I'm sure you've all known people who, who fall either into one category or the other. For example, I've known people whose entire lives, everything 
they do everything they stand for is built on a, a solid foundation of wisdom and obedience and faithfulness and consistency. And when you watch their lives, their lives seem to work pretty good for them. And I know that you know people, just like I do, whose entire life was built on something else. It was built on bad decisions or impulsive choices or um, selfish motives. And you know what? Most of the time, you watch their lives unravel. And I know these are two extremes, and I'm sure you're very aware of which one we should work toward having. But here's the reality. Very few of us are all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Most of us find ourselves somewhere down the middle, and we tend to lean one way or another. So, you know, some areas of our lives are, are built very solidly upon the rock. Other parts of our lives are built kind of on sand. I know people who are who are very responsible financially. They've never bounced a check. They've never missed a payment. They've never been late on a bill. But their relationships are a mess. That part of their life, the relationship part, is built on sand. I've no known some people whose spiritual lives are solid. They're in church. They're doing missions. They're, they're witnessing all of that. But they don't take care of their health. And that's creating a problem for them. That part of their life is built on sand. You know, God has, God has given us the directions in his word for how to live. For every area of our life, we'll, if we read scripture, we'll find the answer to how to have good financial responsibility, how to be in relationship with other people, how to take care of our health and our emotions, um, just any, anything you want to question about how you can live and should live, you can find the answer to it and the directions for how to make it work in Scripture. He's given us this standard to live by, and he's told us that there are things that we need to do to build our life on solid, a solid foundation. But the problem with us human beings is we want to pick and choose. I mean, who doesn't like a good buffet? It's the same way with Scripture. We're terrible about picking and choosing the parts that we want to be obedient to and the parts that we don't think apply to us right now. And you know what that creates? That creates little pockets of sand in our lives, in our foundation. I love to watch golf. I don't like to play it, but I love to watch it. And I love the way those really good players can wind up in those sand traps every bit as much as I do the times I try to go out and play. And it makes me think, hmm, they're not doing everything right either, are they? And it's the same way with our lives. We all have these little pockets of sand in our lives, and it's because we resist the doing part of our scripture today. We're not willing to fully put into practice the words of Jesus into our lives. And so those little sand traps trip us up. Sometimes we say things like, oh God, I, 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 I'm going to volunteer. I have, I have people that will come to my house. I'm going to lead a Bible study. I'm going to teach Sunday school. I'm going to be in church. But but now, wait a minute. My money? My money is a different thing. I want to spend the, my money the way I want to spend my money. What do you suppose that's called right there? That's called a sand trap. That attitude of, I want to do what I want to do with part of my life, that's a sand trap. Um, maybe, maybe you say... Um, 
uh, I'm going to tithe, I'm going to attend church every Sunday, I'm going to do my job good, I'm going to pay my bills, but, but if somebody ticks me off, I'm going to let them have it with both barrels. You know what that's called? A sand trap. That's a little area of your life that you're not building on solid rock. You're building it on sand. And here's something. Do you know, um, sand is a, a strange creature. Sand has an erosion quality to it. It, it just eats away at everything around it. It can cause every area of your life to collapse if you don't take care of the sand trap. You know, when part of your life is solid and stable, and part of your life is unstable, that unstable part has the ability to cause a crash. And, and here's, the, here's the scary part. That part that's unstable, that's the part Satan's going to target. That's the part he's going to target. If you're if you're financially stable on a good rock, but your marriage is crumbling, you know where Satan's going to attack, don't you? He's going to attack the weak area. If you're, you're faithful in service and you're faithful in your attendance, but you don't make an effort maybe to manage your emotions, you know where Satan's going to target. That's where the storm hits first, and that's where the storm hits hardest, in those sandy areas of your life. We all have them. Some more than others, certainly, but we all have them. We need to remember that when it comes to obedience, Christ calls us to full and complete commitment to him. Anything less is it's flirting with disaster. Now, I want to explore this idea, this topic of full and complete obedience. I want to make it clear that, first of all, this sermon is not about God knocking you down every time you mess up. That's not the way God works. Those times when we feel like our life is falling apart, I guarantee you, comes about because of some behavioral issue that we have some lack of obedience, if you will. Just like if you were a three-pack of cigarette-a-day smoker, there's probably a 100% chance that sometime in your life you're going to face some health issues, maybe serious ones, maybe even cancer. When you go to the doctor for your checkup, if he says something like, look, um, I'm going to give it to you straight, these cigarettes will cause you more and more problems as you go along, I don't think your response is going to be, why, Doc, that's the most intolerant medical opinion I've ever heard. You know, you know what smoking three packs of cigarettes a day is probably going to do to your health. Health, it's the same way with, uh, if you uh, go to the doctor and, and he says, um, I think you, you probably have a little bit of issue with your weight. And you say, wait a minute, I eat well, uh, just because I eat 6,000 calories a day, it's all vegetables and lean meat and good for me things. You know, you're not going to argue with the doctor about things that you know very plainly you're doing wrong. Those kind of responses don't make any sense. Many people think that that's kind of how God works. Um, he doesn't give us this long, arbitrary list of rules to live by. The lessons in Scripture are given to us for a purpose, and it's as simple as this. When we live according to God's rules, we get a certain result. When we defy those rules and principles, we're going to get a different result, and I guarantee you it's going to be more like an opposite result. 
there is a sense in which God um, doesn't punish us for disobedience. He kind of lets uh, the disobedience bring its own punishment. Solomon says in Proverbs 5.22, An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. If I eat pizza and ice cream and donuts every day, God doesn't arbitrarily punish me for doing that because by giving me clogged arteries. No. Defying the principle of good health brings about those clogged arteries. So when Jesus says that when a person builds their house on the sand and the wind and the rain bring it crashing down, it's probably because they've not built their life on these principles that he has given us. We've built them on sand instead. That brings us to a couple of kind of in-your-face face kind of truths that we've got to come to grips with. They may not be easy, let me tell you. But until we do, our lives will continue to be controlled by sand. The first truth is, you can't blame everything on the storm. You know, we have a tendency to say things like, well, I'm only having financial problems because we're in this economic turndown. It has nothing to do with the fact that I've spent 110% of my income and I'm in debt up to my ears. We blame our problems on the storm. But that's not really a valid excuse because everyone faces the storm. To say, if it weren't for the storm, I wouldn't be in this position is kind of like saying, I wouldn't have fallen off the roof without gravity. It's gravity's fault that I fell off. That's senseless. Everybody faces gravity in the same way, just like everyone faces the storms of life the same way. The second truth is that um, each of us must be willing to take ownership of the decisions that we make that have brought us to the point we're at. If you're still, still trying to hide behind the idea that it's not my fault, then you're not ever going to build a really solid life. If you're saying uh, it's the storm's fault, it's not my fault, the doctor gave me clogged arteries or you know, God ruined my life, then you're never going to be able to build a really solid life. If you're still looking for a reason why you're not responsible for what's happening in your life, then your life will never get much better than it is because when it all comes down to it, what extent, you're will, what extent are you willing to obey? We all have these little sand traps in our life, these areas that we're not fully putting into practice the teachings of Jesus, the teachings we find in our Bibles. These sand traps make us vulnerable to the inevitable storms of life. So what can we do about it? Well, here's the good news. Here's the good thing. We can change the foundation that our life is built upon. When you, when you buy a house or when you buy a piece of land and build your house on it, whatever that land is, is the land you're stuck with. We, at our Skinner Lake property, our land is moving land. We didn't know when we bought our house 30-some years ago, that all land around a lake moves toward the lake. Now, you don't stand and watch it move, but let me tell you what's happened in the 30 years we've owned our little house, our little cottage. The front right corner that faces the lake is probably three inches lower than the back left corner is because the land has moved 
Thank God it hasn't pulled the house anywhere yet, but the land has moved away from that corner. Land moves. We didn't know that. If you, build, if you buy a, land, a lot of quicksand and you build a house on that quicksand, there's not a thing you can do about it. You can haul all the sand in, all the cement in you want to, trying to fill that quicksand lot, and you'll never get it stable. It will never hold. But with our lives, what we build on for our lives can change. And it comes down to one phrase in our lesson today. That phrase that says, put into practice put into practice the words of Jesus. Put into practice the teachings of Jesus. Remember in verse 24, he says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Here's what I want you to understand. Even if you've spent your entire life building on sand, you can change it today simply by deciding that today you will put into practice the teachings of Jesus in those areas of your life that currently consist of sand. With every act of obedience, you turn the sand that was once in that spot into solid rock. Every time you say, today's the day, this is the time that I'm going to do it God's way, you're turning the sand beneath your feet into rock. Every time you say, this time I'll not spend everything I earn, I'm going to curb my urge to splurge. Every time you say that, a little bit more of that sand turns into solid rock beneath your feet. We all, have, we all have these areas, these sand traps in our lives. These sand traps make us very vulnerable to every storm that comes our way. And they will come. But if we go after the sand that's in our life, if, if, if we learn to pray, Holy Spirit, show me where the sand is. Show me where I'm building my life on the wrong thing. He will show us. God has spoken to us through Scripture about every area that, of our life that we can ever face. About marriage, about family, about work, about our thoughts, about habits. You name it. It's in the Bible. And if you will seek His guidance in Scripture, He will show you he will show you your sand pockets and he will show you the steps you need to take to turn that sand into solid rock. It all comes down to how much you're willing to hear his words and how much you're willing to put his words into practice. I want to read you verse 24 one more time. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them he is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. With every act of obedience, we turn sand into rock beneath our feet when we are obedient. So may we all be like the man who built his house on a rock. Amen. Let's close our worship this morning with number 368, My Hope is Built.
week, my prayer is that you will seek that solid rock, that you will work at being obedient so that all the sand in your life becomes like these beautiful rocks I gave the kids, just solid and lovely. So go in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and find the solid places. Amen. Thank you.